Hey, it's Michael, and this is Heartbeat. What do you feel is needed in the SA music scene to help musicians actually have a successful career? Well, I guess um, in a scene, it's, it's two relationships. There's a relationship between the musician and the audience, and then the audience and the musician. So the musician has to, um, or needs to, bring out a product that's um, audible. So yeah, people gotta like it. Yeah, you gotta mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean you have to create stuff to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. You can create whatever you want, but I think if it's authentic um, and people can see it's authentic, then they you, they would be drawn towards yeah. it. Yeah. It's um, a soulful connection more than anything. People feel your heart's music and they'll yes. respond to it. And also from the audience, going to watch a band doesn't mean you're going to have a party. Always. Yeah. So sometimes you've got to know that all the want must be there. I'm gonna go enjoy some authentic music, no matter what the genre, if it's from metal to punk to instrumental to acoustic to singer-songwriter. Yeah. And I think also with so much partying and uh, drinking and stuff going on, the want to see something authentic is not necessarily there. Yeah. People go out to escape. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to escape is to party and carry on, yeah. where you can also escape within music, and you might actually get more out of that. Obviously, you're not going to get a hangover as well. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know with all that wishy-washy stuff. I said you got anything out of it. Uh, what I got out of it, right, is that it's up to people to actually have the desire within them to connect to music for music's sake, not for the party's sake. Mm. And for the musician to also write authentic, yes, um, authentic. good product. Because it, it's also not just about writing good product, it's about writing it with soul. Because there's some people who make it right. You know, like, this should work according to the market research. It's about 100%. connection, you know. You don't have to follow the formula. Yeah. You know, exactly. And breaking boundaries is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's finding something new to do. Mm. What part of your journey do you enjoy the most? I get the most fun out of you get a lot of satisfaction from putting in a lot of effort in. So, for instance, if you do a marathon, when you finish the marathon, it feels so good because you ran the race. Yeah. So, so that's my metaphor. That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That explains it all. Okay. Some girl young released uh, hallucinations of Hokusai. Yeah. I said it right. Okay. Cool. And then in 2015, you're kind of quiet for a while. <laughs> Are you guys? We gonna create new material. Dane and myself. Dane is uh, what me and him would be the brains behind it, mm -hmm. but more so him. He did all the lyrics and all the imagery. Yeah. And then I did all the tone color and more of yeah the the music Brought direction. His words to life with yes. Music, yes. You know? Yeah. So he did yeah. the poem. I put the music to the poem. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. And he's just moved to Cape Town, so we're not in the same city. I'm planning to move there. Oh, okay, cool. So at the moment, he's finding a rhythm section, uh, drums and bass, and he's going to train them up. I'll give them all the music. They've obviously got the album to learn from. Mm -hmm. And then I know the material so well. I've been playing with him for five years. Yeah. So then, if they need me, they can fly. We can fly me to wherever the gigs are. Hopefully more than one if we're going to fly. Yes, yeah. And, yeah, just one or two rehearsals. And, and mm. <laughs> So hopefully, hopefully Sun Grey Young will be on some festival balls this year. That's cool, man. Mm. That's the best. Thank you. Where would you like your musical journey to take you? I would like my um, solo act to be able to be a vehicle for me to see the world. Ah, that's cool, man. Mm. But what kind of form would you like to use? Like festivals, I mean, I don't know, busking, what do you want to do? Busking. You really want to busk, yeah. To um, dingy bars, mm. to someone's house. Oh, I like it. I, I don't mind playing for, for one person. For your meal. To or one <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do that. 
I want to see the world and I don't need to see it um, in any sort of perspective from a festival or tour or, whatever. Tour or anything. Yeah. If, I, if it could facilitate me to um, open people up to what I have to say with my instrument mm. and for me to go around and see, get inspiration from different uh, parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. awesome man. Oh, cool. What advice would you give to other instrumentalists? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, the instrumental bands are on the rise actually. Mm -hmm. I think it came from dance music because um, Duff 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 is not very lyrical. No, yeah. And you can also do that with a band. Yeah, okay. I've performed with a, a good friend of mine called Gert Vormerans uh, and he plays um, amazing sax. And we can just, if we've got a drummer around, drums, I play bass as well, maybe I'll get on the bass, he does the leads, or he can do the bass on the sax and I'll do leads on guitar, and we can entertain, <laughs> like, it's like a lot of like a dance ensemble, house music, get some bongos in there, and really get it going, yeah. and we can go forever, <laughs> with, cool. with no rehearsal, just feeling off each other. Yeah. Whatever setup you're in, if you play mm. guitar, if you play sax, trumpet, violin, whatever, uh, I think your music can bring jo uh, joy to other people. Yeah, that's cool, mm. man. And some of the other projects I've been involved in, I've moonlighted with Tidal Waves, like the biggest, <laughs> biggest reggae band um, in South Africa, oh. well, in my regard. Okay, yeah, cool. And they're amazing. Had former runs, we did a... We had a gig where they wanted French music. Oh, cool. So I played rhythm guitar, and then we had... Um, Kashmir on uh, oh. accordion. Oh wow! He plays the most beautiful French music, <laughs> and he's an Indian guy who's like literally <laughs> the tiniest, Daddy. skinniest uh, guy, <laughs> and he's holding this huge accordion. I'm surprised it doesn't break his back. And then Chad, so three-piece um, French ensemble. Wow. We were playing like Villa Rose, um, Autumn Leaves, and, oh, wow, and so romantic. Uh, I promise you. <laughs> Hatch actually just phoned me today saying um, he's got a booking for Millipop that he wants to do with me, oh, which is man. an awesome festival in Northern. Yeah. And we're just going to do guitars and sax. <laughs> cool, yeah. Yeah, so, and we're not scared either. So that's also yeah. an instrumental act. He said he wanted to sing a piece, so I said that's cool. What are some of the greatest lessons you've learned from mistakes you've made in the past? Mistakes? Yeah, like, never doing that again. Mm. Well, one thing that I've learned, well, I'm learning at the moment, and which I have been learning, and I probably will be learning for the rest of my life, is to um, not stress about something you can't do anything about. Yeah, let it go. Yeah, so if you're nervous about a show or a performance or something, um, or a setup, you don't know what it's going to be like, or this or that, that stress is for no reason. Yeah. So you're just working yourself up for no reason, so it's wasted energy. Yeah. 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 And other lessons is don't get intoxicated before you play. Yeah, that's so important. Not yeah. everybody does it though. But yeah, yeah. And, hey, one or two beers is fine. But you don't you don't need um, anything to make you feel comfortable or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So we've done obviously been playing rock and roll and punk or whatever kind of music for most of my life. Yeah. And yeah, we would have drinks and things like that before we play and sometimes the performance would be sloppy. Yeah. And like, I live for the performances, so I would really beat myself up on a sloppy performance. Mm. And it just wouldn't be worth it at the end of the day. Yeah, because you want to do that honourable thing where you exchange the audience and the audience receives everything and they give back and you know... Yeah, you so I've got to gotta respect the audience enough um, to um, play more compass mentors. <laughs> yeah. And, also hope that they could um, respect me. I can't um, not respect them and then expect them to respect me. Yeah. Mm. In closing, I think we've got a cliched message as follow your dreams, work hard and enjoy the prosperities of your labour. That is it guys, I hope you enjoyed, subscribe to Heartbeats for more music industry videos, leave a comment and thanks Michael for the awesome chat.